Hey everybody, today we're going to try to answer that one question that everybody wants to know, which is, is it really worth upgrading your antenna? And if you do upgrade your antenna, do you want to upgrade to a directional antenna or an omnidirectional antenna? Well, we are going to take a look at this today, but let me tell you, it's it's been a tough time trying to get some numbers here. And part of this has to do with some of the changes that just happened recently with Helium. So more specifically, I'm going to reference here uh, some stuff that happened on Discord. And this was back on the 28th when it was announced chain variable release, transaction clearing improvements and POC impact. So, yes. There is a proof of coverage impact. Now, I'm not going to read the whole thing. Don't worry. I'm just going to read the beginning part here. As a reaction to current block time averages and difficulties that network users are having clearing transactions, which is another way of saying that your, uh, <laughs> your hotspot got stuck on a specific block and won't unstick, and so you need to buy a new SD card and go through a whole fiasco in order to resolve the problem. Uh, the core developers plan to issue a chain variable transaction today that should offer some near-term relief to the network while longer-term solutions are developed, which is another way of saying that uh, they're going to do some stuff right now that you're not going to be happy with, but it will make the network on a whole happy, and hopefully they'll fix these problems and then we can go back to life as usual. Of course, does life ever go back to the usual? I think not. Okay, these are operational updates that should help with chain stability and transaction clearing overall. The following tuning changes will be applied. So these are the three changes that they did. The POC challenge interval will be raised from 360 to 475. This should lower the target POC requests per block from 1100 to 600 at the current number of hotspots on the network. For hotspots, this means they will create challenges approximately three times per day instead of four. Honestly, I don't think this affects us much. I mean, what, less than 2% of our rewards come from challenges, so it didn't really bother me. This second part did. POC max witness per hop will be lowered from 18 to 14. That's, that's around a 22% loss right there. This will make rewards transactions cheaper and reduce the overall size of blocks and cost to validate. Well, I mean, that's that's good for the network, absolutely. But this doesn't help you and me in terms of getting rewards. So first of all, what bothered me more was if you look at uh, any hotspot on explorer.helium.com, and you go under activity, in the past, you would see right here for any uh, witnessed beacons, you would see the information that tells you uh, how many witnesses actually witnessed and then how many of those were invalid. So you could click on, well, you don't even need to click on anything. You would just look at witness beacons and you would see that. Now you've got to click on it. And inside of that, it's going to let you know that there were, for example, 14 witnesses and zero invalids in this particular case. Point being is that used to be 18 and we used to just have to go under activity to see it, but somehow it got put in a subcategory, which means you have to do a second click to find it. And I gotta wonder, were they trying to hide it? It just, it feels like they were trying to hide it. It bothers me. Uh, okay, going back to the announcements, uh, the second part was, Batch size will be raised from 2000 to 2250. This will allow the average transactions per block to rise to approximately 1600 from 1400. Uh, I don't even know that this didn't concern me for transactions, doesn't bother me. It's the things that happen to POC. So this POC max witness per hop, that affects you and me. That means that previously I had all of these hotspots downtown that I was witnessing and uh, each one would allow 18 witnesses and now that it allows 14 I feel like uh well I'm <laughs> I'm making less money and if you're making less money and I'm making less money we're all making less money 
Uh, it doesn't seem to be, say, increasing the amount per uh, whatever we're seeing. It, we're, we're, we're just being lowered completely to 14 instead of 18. So a 22% loss. Okay, so I just wanted to get that out of the way because it really bothered me. And it affected, well, it affected my tests. It affected not just my tests, but it also affected um, being able to verify uh, something because my hotspots were going down all the time. When a hotspot goes down, and hopefully this will help that, I hope, I guess, but I'm still mad about it because of rewards. Uh, when a hotspot goes down, sometimes it goes down for 24 hours and then you just unplug it and plug it back in and sometime during that 24 hours and everything goes back to normal. But for me, I would have to unplug it. It would take it would find out after it got unplugged that it did not like uh, whatever the current snapshot was. It would revert to an old snapshot. Then it would have to sync up to where the blockchain is currently. And that took about three days. And then once that three days occurred, and then it was another 24 hours once it was synced before it was back online. So that's that 24 hours I was talking about before. And then after that, it would take two to three days before I started getting the normal rewards. Only now I wasn't getting the normal rewards. Okay, so all that being said, uh, this happened during my testing time and it made it hard to get real numbers. So uh, I had to let things go for an extra couple days and then something else went down. It's really, really frustrating, but these are the numbers I wanna show you. So first of all, uh, this one right here, it's getting right now about a 0 0.06. Uh, now, it doesn't have that many average beacons. In fact, it's down by 60%, the amount of beacons it's getting. So you gotta wonder uh, why that occurred. And honestly, it's because of this change with the amount of witnesses allowed, yeah. Uh, also, if I go to a seven day look on this, you'll see that initially I was doing pretty well. I was getting a little bit above uh, what the network average was. So I'm just going to go through the days, 0 0.154, 0 0.145, 0 0.115, 0 0.160, 0 0.159, and then all of a sudden the last two days, uh, 0 0.052, uh, 0 0.091, and like I said, today it is at 0 0.064. So it has gotten low in the past few days. Um, I don't know if that's specifically because of this implementation with the new variables, but I'm guessing it is. And, uh, you know, where you may have been able to get average earnings uh, just by using the default antenna, I don't think you will anymore. Okay, now we look at the directional antenna. And before we do, I want you to look at where the witnesses were uh, as you can see, uh, they are in a uh, specific area downtown, which is where I can see. I mean, I'll be honest here. I got, a, I got a house in the way, and this house in the way really focuses where I can and cannot see. And so, you know, it's going to affect all of the antennas you're looking at. This is the situation I have. And again, that's why I always tell people when you're picking an antenna, you got to think about your location. You want to be as high up as possible with as few obstructions as possible. And uh, this is why my main antenna is in my attic, because it's right above the peak of this house in front of me. And I'll show you that one at the end. Uh, but here is this directional antenna. Now, uh, where this default one is a 2.3 dBi omnidirectional antenna. This is a 9 dBi directional antenna. It's got about an, I'm going to say, 85 uh, degree uh, horizontal and about a 70 degree vertical. And as you can see, it is getting right now 2.57. So way better by almost 0.2 of the default antenna. Uh, if I were to look over a period of time, it was not doing great, honestly, until about two days ago, uh, which is, you know, consequently when this one started doing way less. But uh, we'll look at these. So 0 0.143, 0 0.141, 0 0.221, 0 
163.065, and then we jumped up to 0.246 and 0.192, with it currently right now being at 0.257. So I don't know what happened, but again, two days ago, things jumped up. I had been complaining because uh, this went offline for a couple days and it had always gotten the worst uh, HNT of all of my miners because of its location downtown. And I just felt like, I wonder if it's just because it was one that had bad rewards for such a long time. Maybe that's the reason. Um, I don't I don't think it is uh, based off of this, but I feel like maybe, like I said, it went offline. It took three days to get back online. It took another two or three days before it started getting the regular rewards again. So maybe that's why. That being said, here is my Rack Wireless 8dBi Omnidirectional Antenna. I always recommend this antenna. Actually, I recommend this antenna in general for just going to a location, setting up, and seeing what's around you. Because if you find out that everything is in one particular location, like me, where uh, most of what you want to get is downtown, then maybe a directional is better for you. But you're not going to know that until you have something that can, well, spread wide and check out the whole area for you. And that's that's why I love the Rack Wireless 8 dbi omnidirectional antenna. And that being said, it is getting right now 0.336. So if this one is doing about 0.25 and this 0.33, I mean, it's a little better, right? And it's definitely better than the default antenna, 2.3 omnidirectional. And if we look at the numbers, let's look at over, over the course of the last seven days, 0 0 0.254, 0 0.208, 0 0.349, 0 0.241, 0 0.144. And that 0 0.144 was the drop. It, it had a similar drop to, uh, again, this one here over a seven day period. Uh, and I, again, I don't know what caused that drop three days ago, but uh, then it went to 2.84 and uh, 1.98. And like I said, right now it is 0.336. So honestly, if we look at the averages with those numbers, like I was saying uh, last two days, 0 0.284, uh, 0 0.198, and we compare that to uh, this directional antenna, uh, which was getting uh, 0 0.246, 0 0.192, they're, they're actually doing, relatively speaking, the same. Um, I wouldn't say one is necessarily better than the other, except that they're all mainly getting their rewards from downtown. And if we actually look at a visual of where the witnesses, or sorry, the witnessed, that's what they are now, the witnessed are located, the ones we are witnessing, are located, you'll see that with the omnidirectional, we're actually getting a little bit wider of a spread because it's omnidirectional, uh, whereas uh, the, the directional one is a little bit more focused, and that could be the reason why it's making less, because there are, quite frankly, more hotspots to hit that are outside of the available area that this is focused on. So all I'm saying is, you may be better off uh, with a omnidirectional antenna than a directional antenna. I've had other people who say, oh yeah, downtown is that way, so I'm gonna buy a directional antenna, that should be perfect. And then they go out and they get it to the right height and they switch it out with an omnidirectional and suddenly they're realizing, oh my gosh, there's so many more rewards around me than I realized. And that's why I personally say start with an omnidirectional. And then if you think that you need something a little bit stronger and focused in one area, jump over to the directional. Okay, I'm going to show all of these numbers right next to each other so you can just, just kind of visualize and see in the comparison over the course of the last seven days. But like I said, it's been rough. It's been rough doing this because... Well, like I said, my miners have gone down, and uh, I'm going to show you the last one, the one that's in the attic, and uh, that's a different antenna, but as you can see, it's getting 0.43. It was down, so uh, it was like 0.323, 
and then, uh, well, I'm just going to say it went down and then was down and then was down and then just started getting back up right when everything was going down. So that's the weird thing that I was saying. Um, these two hotspots started getting lower profits on the same day that the one in the attic uh, came back online and then everything jumped. Well, not everything. This 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 one didn't. But uh, then then the one in the attic, 0.45 uh, 0.314. And then, like I said, right now, 0.431. And while people ask me, well, maybe it's the antenna, the antenna is doing it. I honestly don't think so. I think it's just because it is literally two meters higher and, um, taller than the roof across the way. So it is unobstructed. You can look at the visual and you can see compared to, uh, the other two, it's 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 definitely hitting way more, and it's uh, it's hitting you know in not a wider space because it is a directional antenna up there, but uh, maybe it's just stronger. I don't I don't know. It is a nine dBi just like this one. I actually want to take this one and put it right next to it and test it up there, but maybe because I worry about like I said this particular um, this particular. Uh, helium hotspot uh, was getting less rewards in the past. I want to switch it out to use this one. So this one using this helium hotspot using this antenna in the roof to compare between the flat panel antenna that's in the roof. Okay, this was a long video. Thank you for those of you who paid attention to all of this. Uh, the end result for me is yes. Forget this default antenna. I mean, if you have a Bobcat or something that has a four, Maybe, maybe a four is good. Uh, 2.3 or less, uh, not so good. Like I said, we're getting at least 0.2, if not 0.3 above the default antenna. So I would say, forget the default antenna, get eight dBi, nine dBi, um, preferably omnidirectional. But if you know then from the omnidirectional that it's worth pointing in one direction, then get one of these directionals. This thing's like 20, 25 bucks, something like that. Worth doing. I put it in the description. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Um, I will hopefully be starting next week my late night vetting sessions on locations to give you a better idea of what your best bet is in any particular location. Please watch for that. And the only way you're going to know that I'm going to do that is if you like and subscribe. So please do. All right, everybody. Happy mining.